you still have a white snake cassette? Well, if you do, we got the perfect car for you. We're giving away this 1987 Buick Grand National. And it can be yours. Every dollar you spend at lsnasty.com, Justin Swanch from 69.com will get you automatically entered to win this beast. All right, guys, quick little video here. It's a rainy, gloomy Wednesday here in North Carolina going racing this weekend. Got Slick Rick loaded up in the trailer. We got the Giveaway Grand National over here. I just want to point something out before we dive into today's video. Uh, this is normal for a day in North Carolina around here unless it's raining out. It is just pollen central. So someone's like, hey, man, you don't even clean that car. This is every day every day every single car in here this car hasn't even left the shop look at it that's just straight pollen that is the, the trees around here are are absolutely insane look at that front end straight pollen everything straight pollen there's nothing you can do about it welcome to north carolina now that my rant's over you guys can go to ellisnasty.com every dollar you spend gets you entered to win our 87 grand national upgraded turbo it's got a chip in it complete stainless exhaust it's got upgraded intercooler all new piping Upgrade injectors, thanks to Racetronics. Upgraded fuel system, thanks to Racetronics. Badass car, can't beat it. Plus, you look good. It's an 87, it comes with the stock wheels and the drag pack, so you, you literally have it all. I don't know what else. Go to lsnasty.com, we got some new merch out. Go check it out. Uh, the newest Slick Rick shirt is an absolute banger, so if you guys haven't got that yet, you're crazy. But we're not talking about Slick Rick today, we're talking about the Bad Apple, and uh, we got some work done to it. Harry built this nice little cage around our fuel cell so we can have our fuel cell securely mounted i kept everything inside the frame rail this time this is something new for me most of the time we have our fuel tanks out here i put the oil filter out here fuel tank right here whenever you start a build if, if anyone's ever built a car you'll be like oh man i have so much room to do everything i could put anything where i want a prime example is this truck, right? You're gonna look at this truck and you're gonna say, holy shit, dude, all you have to do is just put a motor in there. You have so much room to do everything. Then when you put some turbos in there and then you put the wastegates and the ball valves and uh, the fuel filter and the oil filter and then you go put your fuel tank in there, you're like, damn, I'm out of room. And I wish I would have done it differently. A lot of times I'm like, I wish I could have put it somewhere else, but that's here nor there. Everything is where it is. I think that it fits pretty good, but then you get into some, um, you really have to play chess, not checkers with this stuff. You gotta be very aware of it. So we put the um, we put the pickup right in the center of the tank at the back, pretty standard. It is pretty tight with all this stuff we have going on. If you had to run some adapter fittings like normal, like this is a probably a dash 12, I would say. Dash 12 to dash 16. You just like to have a big feed on it. If you were to run this, and then put a fitting at the end of it, it bumps your fitting way down. So stuff gets really, really long. Uh, just like this, for example, if you were to run an O-ring fitting, so you run a 16AN O-ring to 16 male and then put a 16 female on it, the fitting would be back here. I like to use the Brown and Miller lines. This is one right here. As you can tell, they're very nice. They're crimp stuff. I run this on most of my race car stuff. It's just because that's what I've always run. There's some other companies that are coming out with the crimp stuff. That seems to be nice. But the Brown and Miller stuff, I like it. The line's pretty flexible. It comes with, you can order it and get some heat sleeve to go over it. That's what we're going to be doing with this one here. So I just want to do a video quick talking about how to map out the fuel system on a turbo car. So this is a turbo methanol mechanical fuel pump EFI car. Pretty much that's that's what this is we go to the racetrack to see turbo cars this is what they all kind of have set up wise no one's running an electric fuel pump no one's running a mechanical injection or or a carburetor if they are running either of those two they have the iq of a turkey that's gonna offend some people so i'm gonna walk you guys through how i set up my turbo efi with a mechanical fuel pump fuel systems keep it very simple literally they're all the same on every single car it just seems to work it's redundant i don't have any issues i think that's like the best that you can ask for for a race car, honestly. All right, before we go any further, let's talk about what you need for your fuel system. So obviously you need a fuel tank, you need to have a fuel pump. Now these fuel pumps come in different brands and sizes and 
uh, dual spur gear and they're rotor style and they come with different gallons per minute. So you have to figure that out for how much horsepower you want to make and you also have to match that with your regulator. This setup was already on this motor so I know it works. For instance, you're not going to take a 35 gallon a minute fuel pump and put it on a stock LS because it is just way too much fuel. The fuel pressure regulator can only bypass a certain amount of fuel. So we're not gonna do that. Make sure you get that all spec'd out correctly. What I recommend, you can call the guys up at Waterman and you can tell them, they'll say, hey, what's your setup? What's your horsepower you're expecting to make? And they'll tell you exactly what pump you need. So this is a, um, like a, I forget which one this is. I, run the, I ran the Nostalgia Bertha on the Black Sheep. This one is like the stock car, something that's a little bit more compact and it's got a spacer. We're going with a cam drive on it. So things that you need. Obviously, got to have a fuel tank. We got our fuel tank. You need to have your mechanical fuel pump. We have that. You need a fuel filter. I highly recommend the System 1 fuel filters. I can't speak highly enough on these. I'm not sponsored by them. They don't give me them for free. I call and buy them. I run these on every single car because they are proven to work. I have firsthand experience. I know how good they work. The Black Sheep, for example, I didn't change it in like two years. And when we took the motor apart and I took the fuel filter off, it was full of gunk and shit and it was gross. Never had injector issues. This fuel filter was saving the injectors. Running billet atomizers, running any big injector on methanol, you need to be sure you're running a good fuel filter. So I like the System 1 fuel filters. I can't recommend them enough. Call the guys up at System 1, order them. They sell them on Summit. Make sure you get the right one. They're badass. So we have our fuel tank. We got our fuel pump. We have our fuel filter. Obviously, you need to go to the fuel rails, and then you need a fuel pressure regulator. That is everything, that's all the components that you need for your fuel system. Obviously, you have to have the injectors. This one's running one set, it's set up for two, so you can run two if we ever need to, but it's set up for one set of billet atomizer 700s. So that's what we are going to put in it. Um, all right, so what do we do? What do we do? The layout. Um, I guess the big topic of conversation is first, how do you run your lines? Uh, obviously, you have to go from a fuel tank to the pump, from the pump to the filter. And then this is where it gets very controversial. A lot of guys will go uh, from the filter, right? This is your feed, you got to filter in, filter out. They will go to each fuel rail and double feed the rail. And they go, you need to double feed the rail so you don't suck the rail dry. You can't suck, if, if you just go through one, right? If you just go through one rail, then you come around to the other side and this last injector over here, there won't be any fuel left in it. That is, that is blasphemous. That is blasphemous. Uh, a thought process. A lot. You see it a lot on streetcar stuff. They will run the lines from the, ba the back and they'll go behind the motor right over the transmission. They'll Y into both fuel rails. I don't do that for a number of reasons. Uh, you're adding a bunch of fittings, so cost-wise. Also, when you add fittings, that's a failure point. So now you have more cost. You have more opportunity for failure. And three, I have the data that you don't need that shit. You can single feed the rail, cross over in the back, and then come back and then return it to the tank. It's that simple. Don't overcomplicate it. This is something that's going to be extremely controversial, right? Is look at the size of this line. This is like a dash eight crossover. This is like a dash eight crossover. People are like, there's no way you can run dash eight. Now I'm running dash 12 on everything from the pump to the filters, from the filter to the rail, because that's the size of the fittings on the fuel filter. That's the size adapter fitting I have right here. This rail already had an adapter fitting. So I just go and stick this 12 on there. There's no point to neck it down. Think about this. A mechanical injected blower car runs like a dash eight line and they make 4,000 horsepower and they're not nearly as efficient as EFI. So how are you telling me that a dash eight line for a crossover or a dash 10 feet on this wouldn't work? People are out there getting dash 16 rails, dash 12 rails. Dude, a dash 10 rail. We went with a dash 10 rail on uh, the black sheep forever, and we never had any issues. Now, if you ask people, they say, that's not enough. You need to have a bigger rail so it doesn't get sucked dry. I, one thing that I've learned from this industry is as when it comes to fuel systems, they don't have a clue. They just tell you to get the biggest one, which I don't feel is necessary. I've never firsthand seen an issue with the size of the lines restricting flow. I've seen a bad or an undersized fuel pressure regulator cause issues, but as far as the line, I've never seen any issues. This car, perfect example, 1600 horsepower on E85, dash eight feed. People were losing it. You can't run a dash eight feed. You need to have at least a dash 12 feed. E85 consumes more fuel than gasoline and gasoline we'd recommend a dash 10, but you need a 12. 
first time ever anywhere that no you don't we never had any fuel issues with the line we were at a fuel pump that's a fuel pump issue because we were making more horsepower than the pumps can produce but the lines never had any issues uh we were on a dash dash six crossover a dash six crossover single feed the rail dash six crossover we came from the back with a dash eight fed it crossed it with a six in the front and then return a six back to the tank and people are like no that doesn't work it worked fine i mean car went fours so uh, on this we're running dash 12 because that's what the pump the outlet of the pump has that is what the fuel filter has. So we're going to go dash 12 up to here. And then what I'll do is I'll, I, I might, I, I'm up in the air, depending on if they have them in stock or not at Brown and Miller. If you guys have seen Devin's Facebook, you know what I'm talking about. I, if they can, I will remove this um, adapter fitting and get a male O-ring fitting. So remove a failure point. And then we'll go back here. This stuff's all welded. We don't have to worry about a crossover because we already got the crossover done. So it's going to go dash 12 to in, dash 12 to the rail, go through the rail, cross over in the back, dash eight, come out here, we're gonna remove this fitting because we're not gonna use this. And this is what I like to do. A lot of people put the fuel pressure regulator up here on the rail like that. They tell you not to put the regulator on the motor just because it, it has a bunch of vibrations. What I do, again, to reduce some fittings, a lot of people will like mount them over here. Now you gotta run a fitting from the rail to there, run another fitting on the other side to the tank. Well, why don't we just put it in the tank, right? So that's what we're gonna do on this setup. We're gonna run the fuel pressure regulator in the tank and uh, Harry welded it on with it clocked correctly. So we're gonna be able to come out here, run down to the motor plate, across the motor plate, and then come in with a, a 90 right here. And this is gonna be your, your return. So your return's right on the tank. So you eliminate one, at least two fittings plus mounting this uh, and you eliminate some lines. So it saves you some cost as well. So real quick overview, this is how it's gonna go. We're gonna run a dash 16, 90 degree tight radius male with o-ring from brown and miller so that's going to come out and turn right here it's going to go up we're going to eliminate this guy here we're probably going to turn the pump close to vertical just a little bit more we're going to eliminate this guy and this is a dash 12 so we're going to go dash 12 o-ring 90 tight radius to dash 16 line right that's how confusing this shit is and then that's going to be our pickup right that's going to be our from our fuel cell to the pump out of the pump might just leave this guy on there if I'm being lazy. We're gonna go dash 12 to the filter. From the filter, we're gonna go just dash 12 right up here. Probably gonna eliminate this. This is a 12 to 12 male. So it's gonna just be a 12 AN O-ring, 90 degree swivel from Brown and Miller. Line goes right on there. And then here, we're gonna do the same thing. We're actually gonna step down to 10, right? Because that's the size of this. There's no point to go bigger. So we're gonna go dash 12 O-ring with a 10 line. We'll do a 90 degree, we'll point it down. We'll go across the motor plate, zip tie it up, and we're gonna put it right on the regulator there. You got our fuel pressure and boost reference stuff right there. Run our wiring right down the frame rail. Run our vacuum line from the intake right across the motor plate. Keep everything super clean. Stay out of no man's land. I consider this no man's land. And this stuff here is no man's land. So I don't like to have lines and shit going across no man's land. So that right there is mapping out your entire fuel system. It's very tough to get it 100% spot on with the fitting. So I'll order a couple extra. I do keep... I don't know, I'll keep three or $4,000 worth of stuff in stock. But it goes pretty quick, the Brown and Miller stuff. But yeah, that is... Uh, it's tough to really hand select without doing it because you might put a 90 on here and it looks a little bit better with a 45 so it's tough to really just come out the gate but uh plumbing this thing i'm going to get everything ordered up today and then we can really start plumbing i think i can you know just because i like to see progress i might just leave these fittings on there just so i can make the lines and be like oh i'm done with that but uh but yeah so that is the fuel system this is probably a 3,000 horsepower capable fuel system um it's a damn near 20 gallon a minute uh maybe even a little bit more um fuel pump uh, with a set of 700s. It is set up to run two sets. So if we do run out of injector, we can just add another set and really just have to wire it in and then we should be good to go. So when Devin wires this car, we'll have him set up with a provision to run a second set of injectors just in case this thing gets really spicy. But yeah, that is, um, that's what we got going on here. That is how you kind of map out your uh, fuel system. If you guys have any questions on this, you can send me a DM on Instagram. Instagram is probably the best place to get me, but I have no problem answering any questions on how to run your um, configuration for your fuel system. A lot of guys, this is kind of like uncharted territory. And one thing I will say, there's like a big misconception on the maintenance when it comes to a methanol car. 
If you keep the fuel system primed up, you run it every once in a while, you shouldn't have any issues. I don't run top-end lube in any of my stuff. I've never had any issues with the injectors. Uh, I run a really good filter. The pumps seem to last long. Um, I just try to stay up on them. And if they're sitting in the shop for a month or so, every, every, you know, every week or so, just fire it up. Put some heat in it, put a vacuum on the valve cover after, and, uh, you know, just keep that fuel going. So um, that's going to wrap it up. A little bit of a tech video. I know it's kind of weird having a tech video for me, but uh, there you go. That's how you're going to plumb your turbo methanol front-mounted fuel cell mechanical pump race car. So thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you guys in the next video.